Imagine living your life after 50 and feeling energized and excited about your future. Welcome to the Women in the Middle podcast, the podcast for women who are ready to figure out what they want and create the life they deserve. Here's your host and master certified life coach, Susie Rosenstein. Hey there, welcome back to the podcast, Women in the Middle. I'm your host, Susie Rosenstein, and I am so glad to be here with you again for this week's episode, which features another interview in the weekly WOW with Women in the Middle series. This week, we're talking about something that so many of you have talked to me about, but it's also something that brings up a lot of fear. That topic is writing, and in particular, blogging. Now, my guest this week is Hope Hansen. Hope has been using blogging in her personal and professional life for almost 15 years. She basically went from someone who blogged in a therapeutic and personal way to blogging to promote her business to finally teaching other amazing women how to blog and how to help them earn a living from their blogging, if you can believe that. But before we dive in, I want to ask you something important, and it's the perfect time of year to talk about it. Now, I know you might be up to your ears in planning for the holidays, but I want you to take a minute and think about something. Do you know where you want to be this time next year? Now, that's other than sitting here listening to another amazing episode of Women in the Middle. (laughs) But no, seriously, do you know where you want to be this time next year? The reason this is so important is because time, she is flying. You know it. I know it. We all know it. We feel it. Now, there's no problem with this if you're intentional about your life. What that means is there's not a disconnect or disappointment about time when you know what you want to do and you do it. Think about it. Really allow yourself to think about it. This is true about anything, small things and big things. For example, your morning routine. Let's look at that. If you get up and do the morning routine you have planned, no problem. But if you get up and the morning flies by because of some Facebook uh, vortex or YouTube or clicking around like crazy and all of a sudden all this time goes by and you don't do what you've got planned, it's not that great. It feels like time is flying by. Now think about something bigger, like being in your job too long when you feel like it's the most soul-sucking experience of your life, for example. If you make plans to do something about it and then another year rolls around and nothing's changed, you definitely feel like time's flying by at the speed of sound. This is why it's so important to give yourself time to think and reflect about what you want going forward. And at the end of a calendar year, Like this, it's such an easy time to focus on it because so many of us are doing it together. So my amazing women in the middle, please ask yourself this. Do you want to be in the same place you are right now, this time next year? That's you with the same thoughts and feelings you have right now. So if you're feeling stuck, this means you will still feel stuck. If you're overwhelmed by what you can't do anymore because you're too old, You will still have these thoughts this time next year. I call that focusing on what you can't do instead of what you can do. This actually came up last night while talking to some of my friends, and one of them was quite aware of some reorganization that was going on at her workplace. And I asked her if it was time to start looking for a new job yet. And she said, at 56 years old, there's nothing out there for me. See what I mean? And here's another example. Maybe you feel stagnant. That's how I felt when I was going through this, just lack of growth of any kind. And if this is you, are you ready to grow and do something serious about it? You owe it to yourself to really think about it. Believe me, no one else is thinking about this for you. This is exactly why I get up raring to go every morning. I'm on a mission to help women like you get excited about your life. My wish for you is that you actually fall in love with your life, especially now at your age. And this, my friend, is how I gave birth to my new baby in menopause, my new one-year coaching experience aimed at helping you focus on just this. 
It's called the 50 Unplugged Mastermind. It's perfect for you when you're ready to finally put your own needs on the priority list for a change. It's all about celebrating opportunity. It's about unplugging, not from your phone or devices, but from the stigma and stereotypes about what you can't do because of your age and confidently focusing on what you can do regardless of how old you are. It's about being way more intentional about your life so you don't have regrets. Like I said, nobody else will do this for you. It's about possibility, growth, excitement, and freedom. It's about busting fear-based decision-making and developing confidence to become freaking unstoppable. I am serious. How great is this, right? And the best part? You get to be part of an amazing community of women who want the same thing. (laughs) I have to tell you, it's an OMG moment, right? I am so freaking excited about this. And I want you to really think about it. Think about where you want to be this time next year. And if you want to make sure that you make shit happen like this in your life this year, don't waste another second. Go to www.talktosuzie.com to learn more. There's lots of information there. 50 Unplugged is a unique and totally fun year-long coaching experience for women who are turning 50 or in their 50s or even 50-ish and are committed to getting excited about their lives again. So if you feel like your life is passing you by, this is for you. If you feel like you've been wasting time, this is for you. If you are ready to go from stuck and stagnant to feeling intentional and excited about your life, go ahead, apply already. Just go to www.talktosuzie.com and book your 10-minute call to see if we're a good fit. It's free, no obligation step. You really can create that life you've always wanted. I, I'm i not just being like full of it. I am so serious. I have seen it with my clients, huge transformations. And I just don't want you to waste another minute of feeling like you are wasting time. You are wasting time. Get your application in. There are limited spots and there are bonuses for signing up this month. So get going. I can't wait to see your name in my calendar. All right, I'm stepping down off my soapbox now. I'm holding the railing. I'm being careful. I don't want to fall. I just can't help my own excitement because this work is unfreaking believable and it's so powerful. You'll never be the same. Read the testimonials on my website. It is the best way to regret proof your life for sure. Okay, let's dive into the whole blogging topic because that is also important. Like I said, so many of my clients say that they want to write more in midlife, but so many of my clients are not writing. What's the disconnect with this? Well, they say it's too scary and they're afraid that nobody will read their stuff, or they say it's too scary and they are afraid that somebody will actually read their stuff. <laughs> Technology is the other thing that feels completely overwhelming. I can totally identify that with that when I started my blog. So my guest today is a blogging ninja, and she will help you get your head around all of this. Now, I've been blogging for about five years, maybe six, and I thought that that was a lot, but it's nothing compared to my guest today. Hope Hansen has been using blogging in her personal and professional life for almost 15 years way before Facebook or any kind of platform that most of us were aware of. And I think you know that blogs are very popular today, and so are platforms like WordPress, like everybody knows about it. Hope basically went from somebody who blogged in a therapeutic and personal way to blogging to promote her business to actually teaching other amazing women how to blog and even how to help them earn money from blogging. So. Buckle up, girlfriend. I have a feeling that you may have even considered blogging for yourself. After you hear from Hope, you won't have any more excuses. Enjoy the interview. Hi, Hope. Welcome to the Women in the Middle podcast. I'm so glad you're here. I am so glad you invited me, Susie. Thank you so much. I'm looking forward to to chatting with you and uh, letting your listeners know a little bit more about blogging. Well, that's why I'm, I'm just so tickled because I can't even tell you how many of my clients talk about 
wanting to write, but the way they're thinking about it or something is just preventing them, right? There's such resistance to actually doing it. In the old days, we would say to put pen to paper. And today there's not a lot of that going on with blogging. It's really putting fingertip to keyboard. But so many people are interested in blogging, but don't. What do you find out there? So I find out that right now there's a real resurgence of people looking to blog simply because it's a, it's an easy way to self publish. So you might end up self publishing for a personal reason. Um, I see a lot of women, especially if they're going through transition in their life, using it as almost a therapeutic um, avenue. And then we also have a number of people that are using it to promote their businesses. So it's an incredible escape of things that you can do with blogging. Yeah, I'm so glad you said that. It's so true. So let's go into a little bit of your background. When did you start blogging? So I've been blogging for years now. I probably started about 15 or 18 years ago. Um, I was a corporate event planner and it was just something that people were really interested in. So I was talking a lot about what I was doing for work and then some personal stuff. I was single living in Toronto. Um, So it was really just kind of a therapeutic getting out there and just talking. I had a decent little following and then I transitioned my career to a professional photography and I really used uh, blogging as a way to promote my business. So I've done everything on the spectrum. That's, that's so cool. So when you started blogging, you were probably like, your friends had no clue what you were doing. My friends thought I was a little crazy, actually. They were surprised (laughs) (laughs) because it was before Facebook. It was before Instagram. It was before you kind of put your life out there for people to see. Um, so it was a really, it was a really great way to kind of show people what I did because most of my friends had no idea what a corporate event planner would do or living in the city, what, you know, my life was like, they thought it was this big glamorous, you know, fun adventure every night when really it was just hanging out at Starbucks. So it was a really great way to, it was really therapeutic for me. Um, and it kept me connected with people who I didn't necessarily see every day. Yeah, that's so interesting. A lot of people do talk about writing as being therapeutic. Um, but what, what do you think your main motivator was at that time? Like, was it that you were interested in new technology? Was it sharing? Was it promoting your business? What do you think it was? It was probably a little bit of all of them. Um, I've always really liked technology and just the opportunity to just talk Um, I I was never one to really write in a journal. I've always been more of a, like you said, a a fingertip to keyboard type of person. Um, And at that point, I was doing a fair bit of traveling for my job as well. So it meant that I could connect with people no matter where I was, if I was in Toronto or if I was in Calgary for an event or it just, it really gave me that chance to showcase what I was doing. And there was some other, you know, some more personal stuff in there as well. So it was uh, a great way for people just to keep connected and, and to give me the opportunity to feel that I was out there. Yeah, I totally see that. And um, one of the things that I found with my blog is that it's, it's such an amazing way to connect because with, with a quick click, somebody can give you feedback and say, you know what, that happened to me too. And I remember getting um, some advice when I first started blogging a couple of years ago was imagine that you're writing to one person. Like, don't imagine yourself speaking to hundreds. Just imagine that you're speaking to that one person. And as soon as I had that shift, I started to get more feedback about my blog. Like, the connection seemed to be a little easier for people to make. It, I find with my clients that when they're, t- when they're promoting for business, we talk a lot about having an avatar or your ideal client. So with that, we really do try and hone them in on like you're writing to your best friend because your best friend is probably your ideal client. And it's the same with personal blogs. It's if you think that there's someone out there that really needs to hear what you have to say, whether you're going through a transition in your life or you're just trying to figure out what you're going to do next or just simply you're in a situation that you know that others are in. Um, I have a client right now who's going through retirement. She's a teacher. And she's kind of at a loss as to what to do next in her life. So it's a great chance for her to kind of work stuff out through her head. Um, But she's reaching other women who are in that same boat, that they're in the process of retiring. 
and they're not really sure what to do next. So it's been a great therapeutic as well as personal development for her. Yeah, I love that. Um, before we get into how you started this business, I wanted to talk uh, just a little bit about how we met. Uh, so Hope and I met in the direct sales world, and that was actually the first time I had a blog, and I found it really creative, a way to incorporate the products in direct sales that I was like really committed to, and I had fallen in love with them, and to come up with creative ways to write about them uh, was really fun and kind of surprised me uh, at how much... I don't know, what an amazing vehicle it was to talk about all kinds of things. It, it, for businesses now, you're, you're seeing, um, there was a st statistic I read recently that Amazon is one of the top retailers in the world now. So people are using blogs as a way to recommend products that they love, just like you did. You had multiple products on your blog. Um, and it gives, it gives you a chance to talk about what you love and what you love about it. It's kind of like sitting down with a bunch of girlfriends and saying, hey, I like this lipstick, this makeup, this jewelry. And if you're looking for something like that, here's my review and go check it out. So it's a great avenue for that. You've got people now recommending books, um, just about anything on that, on the business kind of money-making side of blogging, which is great. Some of my clients who are more just personal bloggers, they're still recommending you know, books or, or products that are changing their lives. And it's a, great, it's a great resource for other people going through it that they don't even know that they're helping. So. Exactly. So, okay, so you were using blogging as one of your really effective tools. Mm -hmm. And then, then what happened that you started to decide to actually teach people how to blog? I had a, a wonderful a mentor reach out to me and ask me to teach blogging to her clients. And so I spent about two years uh, teaching primarily women how to build blogs and what they needed to do in order to, to do that. Because there's the technology side of things, which can be a little intimidating for some people. It doesn't have to be. If you can start a Facebook page, um, you really can build a blog. And then there's the side of it about, well, what do I write about? And that can be the more self-discovery journey when you start thinking about things that you can write about and who you can talk to. So I did that for about two years and then I had the opportunity to go out on my own. And so for a couple of months now, I have been teaching a number of people um, how, to, how to build blogs and how to get their voice in the world and how to basically self-publish. Um, we have every, I've had everything from people who are doing it for business. Um, I've had direct sellers. I've had people who are running carpet businesses again, to people who are in transition and just looking to get out there and talk more. Um, one of my clients is now looking at building courses because she has an expertise that people are looking for. So it's giving her a real avenue to share her expertise with a, a larger group of people. Yeah. So do you find that most people come to you for business purposes or do you find there's a, a trend with the personal blogging? Originally, it was mostly for, um, mostly for business, but what will happen is during the, the building of the blog, they realize that their, their own voice, their own story is just as important, and I'm finding that there's almost a 50-50 split right now with people who are just literally looking to get out there and share their transition, their journey, and so it gives, uh, it, it, it's the technology part of it's the same. The, the, you know, setting up a WordPress site or setting up other sites, but it's the content that really makes the blog. You know, one of the things that has become so obvious with my women in the middle is that with midlife women, so we've been around a couple of decades now, and certainly this technology isn't new anymore, but for many women in the middle, it is the first time that they're actually thinking, you know, that they might actually have time to write because maybe they're empty nest or maybe they just have, um, you know, fewer responsibilities at home because the kids are older. So they have a little bit more time uh, to focus on themselves. And if one of the things that they always wanted to do was write, then it kind of becomes possible. And then all the other stuff comes up about fear of putting themselves out there and fear of technology and all that. But one of the things that um, also comes up is this idea that they don't have anything to say. 
Mm. And so one of the things that is so common with women in the middle is this kind of habit of downplaying this older and wiser status. So I'm a firm believer that, you know, we've earned our stripes. We are older and wiser. And as a byproduct of being older and wiser, we have a lot to say, a lot of perspective, a lot of tips, a lot of reflection, and a lot of context. And so one of the things I work on all the time with clients is looking at ways to, and I, I'm sure you do this too, is to identify what's unique about your personal story and how to integrate it into the message that you're sharing on purpose. It's incredible now because um, women especially, do, you're right, they do downplay what they have to say. And the reality is if you can sit down and you can have a conversation with your girlfriend, you can, you have a story to share. And there's so many women who are either at the same place or coming up to the same place that they need that advice. We're all in different places now. We're getting into situations where maybe, you know, your own mother never went through it or your own sister didn't go through it or our lives are so much different than they were even 20 years ago having people out there that are willing to put themselves on the internet and share their story on the internet. There's always someone that needs to hear what you have to say. And even if it's just simply, you know, how you dealt with, you know, going into a different store to buy clothing or doing, dealing with that transition or the first time you have grandkids or all the things that happen to women as we get a little older, um, there's someone out there that doesn't have the resource that they can ask about it. And your voice is so important to share it because we are women. We're meant to lift, lift each other up. And so blogging gives you that ability to lift up complete strangers that maybe you haven't met in real life, but really do need to hear what you have to say. And I, I can't emphasize that enough to my clients and to my friends that the, the challenges we face are universal. So to be willing to share what you've learned through those challenges, it, it, it can really help someone. So that, that's a big part of blogging. It's, it's supporting other women in the, in the world. Yeah, that's so true. And I'm just kind of giggling because a couple of my blogs that got the, the most response were very personal and it wasn't anything that I'd be sharing with just anyone. <laughs> One of them was about just how, how much, um, how common it is for midlife women to have underwear that sucks. And, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I was really guilty of it. And uh, one day I was just looking at it going, oh my God, this is actually embarrassing. Like the underwear, it's not just that it's not pretty, it's that it's not really functional anymore. Like the Lycra was springing out or or, or the, um, the cotton liner was like blown out, whatever it was. And I'm like, what is my problem? And one of the things that, that was my problem was that I really didn't even know where to get decent underwear. And so I don't know if it was a function of me having sons and kind of being out of the fashion loop for a couple of decades, or I, I don't know what it was, but it got to the point that it was embarrassing. And so many women shared with me that that was the fire that they needed to dump out some of their crappy underwear, no pun intended, and to do some replacement. And one of my friends has this rule that you're not allowed to bring in a new pair of underwear unless you throw out an old one. So that was, that was a really good one where it's like, you're kidding me. Oh my God, it's such a relief that I'm not alone. And another one that got a lot of um, feedback was the chin hair whisker issue. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I put it out there that I'm struggling and I got so much advice and so much support with the whole chin hair thing and menopause. And oh my gosh, it was, it was so fun. So again, many of us underestimate the power of sharing day-to-day -day life as well as, you know, being able to grow your business. So I love that you really talked about the two different goals of different kinds of blogging and, and the importance of of sharing our lives with strangers and building community and building support and also the ability to really share and promote your business in a way that just might be a little more creative than your competition. At blogging is, there's a um, conversation right now as people are moving away from Facebook, as people are moving away from pictures. 
um, that there's a real authenticity in blogging because someone comes to your site, they're going to have an about me page. They're going to have, they're going to get to know you a little bit better than they necessarily would on an Instagram account. And so the opportunity to share and just build that tribe. And like you talked about, you wouldn't necessarily sit there with your girlfriends and talk about your underwear, but you can do it online totally fine because you don't have to face anyone. <laughs> exactly. Oh my gosh. The tips were the funniest. Okay. So I want to ask you about the ability to actually make money from blogging. How does that work? So there's a couple of different ways that you can do it. One is obviously by promoting a specific product or a brand if you are in direct sales. But the other one that's a little bit more fluid is monetization and affiliate programs. There's a lot of companies out there now that are looking for ambassadors, people that are using their product and they can recommend them. And based on those recommendations, you'll get back a little bit of money or free product. Um, I'm using a, a smoothie, uh, a breakfast smoothie shake from Quebec, on, uh, Quebec, Canada, and they have an affiliate program. So when I share pictures of me drinking the smoothie, I can share a link. And if anyone goes to buy those, I can get free smoothies, which makes me happy. Um, uh, Amazon has an incredible affiliate program. A lot of companies out there now, you can make anywhere between you know, five and 25% just for referring products that you love. So even if you have a more of a lifestyle blog that you're talking about transitions or, you know, growing up or growing, you know, being a grandma for the first time or all those great things that happen, you can still refer product and make a little bit of money. There, there are women out there right now who are replacing corporate incomes through personal blogging. And that, a pretty with with the cost of retirement and the cost of wanting to continue to love live a life that's you know enjoyable and has extras in it it's a great residual not having to go to work way to make money so um i really i really like that way of making money it makes me happy yeah that's cool and the other thing is it's like you know what it feels like when you get a good deal somewhere you can't wait to share that with a friend or it, I always liken it to if you tell somebody that there's a really great restaurant and you've been to this restaurant and you love it and you go and, go and your friends try it out, it's not like the restaurant turns around and hands you a free dinner most of the time. So to share deals, to share great product, um, to share great reviews of stores that you've been to, um, to get those tips on how to buy good underwear or get rid of you know facial hair or all the other wonderful things we're all going through right now. Um, it just gives you a way to, to refer, to, to get a product that somebody else has tried and you can at least assume that they like it if they're going to review it and make a little bit of money off of it. So Yeah, yeah. And, and that's the other thing you bring up is trust. So uh, now I've had this podcast for about a year and a half, almost a year and a half. And you know what they say in marketing, it's all about relationship building and no like and trust. And What's happened is, uh, just like when you listen to the radio, I feel like I know the people on the radio that I listen to regularly, and so people um, feel connected, and when they feel connected, there is more trust, and I love having the opportunity to, people, uh, to talk to people who are actually listening on the podcast, so anybody listening now who wants to get a hop on a call with me, you know I do a free 20-minute call, hop on, I love talking to you guys. I love getting feedback on, on uh, the topics and what's been really useful for you and what, uh, you know, what other content that I can share and explore and, and just make available. So I think that blogging is just another way to do that. And I really think about blogging now that it's like foundational content. I think that if you have a website and you don't have a blog, it's kind of like your right arm isn't there. Well, and if you are a blog, if you do have a business, um, blogging allows you to be more easily found through things like Google and um, other search engines, where a static website, it doesn't give you that ability to create new content, um, to really reach your, your audience on a more regular basis. Um, and everyone, everyone's looking for advice. Um, everyone's looking for that voice. And there's not, 
I'm a firm believer that people are moving away from things like traditional media, um, like newspapers and things like that, because blogging is just, it, it can tug at your heartstrings. It can give you that more personal feeling. So people are still consuming content. They're just consuming it from other places. Yeah, that's true. And, and one of the huge advantages with blogging is that you are consuming it by reading it. Mm-hmm. And that means that you can have a link, a hyperlink, and with one quick click, you're connecting to whatever it is you're recommending or referring to or, or other information that you just want them to have because it's related or another blog that's related. And that is really powerful with blogging. With podcasting, it's not quite the same because people are usually consuming a podcast on the go, walking the dog, you know, in the bathroom, putting on makeup, in the car. It's not the same thing with a hyperlink. And uh, that hyperlink is, is very powerful. And again, it can, it's, the reason that the internet works is because of the web that we've created. And the fact that you can go on one particular article, Facebook, something, and if you like it, you can follow that path and you can get more information. And it gives you that ability to, to learn and grow within this amazing group of, uh, of formats that's all over the place. I mean, I've seen blog posts that link to other podcasts or that link to social media or to link to, to reviews for other products. And it really does, it, it helps you grow as, as an audience. It's so true. Now, it doesn't help with the look, there's a squirrel problem, though. <laughs> As long as you avoid Pinterest, you should be okay. <laughs> you can, it is like, it's such a vortex. You can really <laughs> have so much fun. I always talk about my iPad and my iPhone. It's like, it's like a party in a box, you know? Mm-hmm. It's like, there's just so much um, fun that can be had with clicking on links. And, and I love following that trail because you're on a trail that you like. So it makes sense to follow the trail. And usually if you've got a blogger that you, you know, you read, I have a few that I follow fairly regularly. I try and read at least two or three different blogs a day. And it's incredible how a good storyteller, which is basically what bloggers are, can keep you immersed for a lot longer than you thought you were. Um, there have been a few times where I've gone and, you know, you, you click down the rabbit hole and all of a sudden you're seven or eight pages in and you've lost 15 minutes. But the knowledge that you've gained or just the enjoyment that you've gained, I'd prefer to do that than watch a lot of television that's out there right now. So, Yeah, definitely. I've noticed the same thing. So tell me, if somebody is listening and they've been a wannabe writer and they know it, <laughs> we always, <laughs> like on my podcast, we, we talk about thoughts and we talk about being aware of your thoughts and noticing how it makes you feel. And I'm just thinking right now of several Um, clients and people who have shared with me that they really want to write. And then every time I check with them, they haven't started because of fear of putting themselves out there or fear that they're going to be judged. Or I don't know, maybe that association that it's like a book and it needs a lot of editing. Who knows what exactly is going on? But if you're listening right now and you know that you've had a thought that you'd like to share or that you'd like to write and you really would like to dip your toe in, Hope, what should they do? Well, so I want to talk a little bit about the fear because there's three big fears that bloggers tend to have. And okay, good, one, good. The first one's the fear of technology. They're afraid they're not going to know how to set their site up or even where to start. So I've got a bunch of products that can help you with that. But the other two fears are interesting. There's the fear that no one is going to read it. Mm-hmm. And then there's the fear that somebody is. <laughs> And it's incredible how those two fears, you'll go back and forth between, well, what if nobody likes it? What if nobody reads it? Well, then you're just writing for yourself and it's an enjoyment. It's a therapy and it's, it's helping you work through things. The fear of people reading it is incredible because I really do believe that that actually stops people even more than the other two. So it, it's like the fear of success. And so to be able to get out there and to say, you know what, I have a voice and I'm worth listening to, I'm worth reading, that's an incredibly opening journey that uh, especially my, my female bloggers go through. So um, yeah, you can, get through, you can get through all of it, 
And the other great thing is, unless you share what you're writing, unless you go and you actually tell people it's there, you can have a pretty big blog without people finding out that it's even in existence. That's so true. Like people tend to think, oh my God, if once I press publish, everyone's going to see it. And the truth is you have to work so hard to be found. Mm -hmm. Yep. And so you can use it as that online journal. And if you can write a Facebook post, if you can write an email, you can write a blog post. Uh, I joke with my clients all the time that done is definitely better than perfect. And I am a very creative speller. And I will have, I mean, I'm a business blogger and I will have people come to me go, oh, I found a spelling mistake on your website. I'm like, oh, you only found one? You're doing good. Um, It doesn't have to be perfect. It has to be authentic and it has to be you. And that's the most important part. Yeah, that's so great. I do want to touch on fear for a second. So, you know, when you understand how mindfulness works and you understand the power of your own ability to create your emotional well-being, you, you really do slowly but surely start to have an appreciation that your thought is creating that feeling of fear or resistance. And what we can do instead of going straight to the land of sunshine and daisies is like, I'm a writer, I'm a New York Best Times, you know, <laughs> best-selling author, you know, is just to start with something that creates even the feeling of being neutral mm-hmm. is better than fear. Because when you feel fear, you kind of pull back and you procrastinate, you don't start, right? But when you feel something that is not fear, but not like uh, excitedly proud perhaps, or something at the other end of the spectrum, just something like curious, motivated, interested, or even just um, aware that I want to be a writer. You know what I mean? There's so many other feelings that you can feel instead of I'm kicking ass or I'm scared to death. And so if you think something that creates all of those possible feelings for you in the middle, it will make it easier for you to lean into the behavior that you need to take, which is like to actually start (laughs) Uh than not. So a thought might be something like, we call these bridge thoughts, I'm open to the idea that I can start a blog is very different than I'm scared to death or I'm learning that I'm able to write in a blog. Again, is very different than I'm never going to be able to do this. And so it's the, you know, if you really want to do this, you need to get your thoughts in order. And so I'd love to just offer to think about what kind of feeling you would need to start and then ask yourself what you'd need to think to feel that feeling. So just starting is so much more important than finishing. And I love uh, this notion that you suggested that you can start without actually publishing. It's an incredible tool. And I find that a lot of the women that I work with, especially, there's this stigma almost to being a writer. It's like you said, they feel like they have to be the New York Times bestseller or sell 100 books. But to say that you're a blogger, it actually takes that, that not pretension, but that, that, that lofty goal away. Mm. Oh, I'm a blogger. It's okay. It's okay to be a blogger. Lots of people are bloggers. So it's a great, like you said, it's that bridge. It's that bridge from having ideas and thoughts that you want to share to maybe not being able to write, you know, a a 30 or 50,000 page manifesto. Most most blog posts are between 300 and 700 words. Yes, I'm so glad you shared that. And that's really not difficult at all uh, to, to, to complete something that length. But what is difficult is to edit yourself, right? And to, to think about sharing content in bite-sized chunks. Mm Mm-hmm. And so to be able to, like I said, if you can write an email, if you can write a blog post, or if you can write a Facebook post, you can, you can be a blogger. Yeah, so good. And the other thing that's amazing about blogging is the way you can leverage content. So I worked in a publishing department uh, during the transition of print-based publishing to being more digital. And so we were at the beginning of getting your head around developing content and thinking of it as a piece of content. And then you can do other things with it. 
So once you've got your blog, which is often the base, the baseline for some development of content, then that content can be manipulated or, or shaped into other things. It can be tweets, it can be Pinterest, it can be Facebook posts, it can be um, Instagram, it can be a Facebook Live video. There's so many things you can do. So I love using blogging as uh, a process to work out my thoughts. And even we're finding a lot of our clients now too, like they're taking a podcast and a podcast then turns into a blog post or a video. And, and so content is very free flowing. Once you have a base idea, you can really expand on it and pull so many other ideas. You can start with one blog post and then write a series. Um, and we've seen a lot of people do that as well. So that's why you have a little bit more to say. You're, you're getting close to your manifesto. Yeah. <laughs> so Hope, tell us, I know that you've got lots of things on your website that actually help people. So tell us a little bit about what you have on the website and how people can get more help. So uh, my company is called The Purple Teacup. And basically, it's to help women learn how to blog. And so we have a number of uh, little tools and tricks up there that uh, we're constantly developing. We have, if you are already a blogger, we have a great uh, checklist that you can use to make sure that you're maintaining your blog because a blog's kind of like a car. And if you don't maintain it, you don't take care of it, it's going to break down and you're not going to have a very good blog. Um, we're in the process of creating a number of courses that really are going to make it easy for anyone who wants to blog to figure out the technology side of things. And so one of the courses I'm super excited to be launching is uh, how to build a blog in under $150 in less than a day. So literally, you make yourself a nice lunch, maybe a cup of tea or coffee, you sit down in front of your computer, and in a couple of hours, you have a product that you can really be proud of that, again, you can look at using for personal or business reasons. So, Oh my gosh, that's so exciting. Is that a downloadable course or is it like a live online, online event? So it's going to be a down, it's going to be a DIY. So do it yourself. Um, it's on our training platform. So you can work at it at your own pace. So if you don't have a whole day to work on it, you could do bits and pieces over a couple of hours, over a couple of days. And then at the back end, we also talk about how to great, how to create good content, how to promote your content, um, and really how to keep yourself going because that's another challenge that some people have is they start this blog and then they get it all up and running and they look at it and they don't know what to do with it now. So we <laughs> really want to make sure that people who start blogging can continue to blog and continue to put themselves out there in a really authentic and positive manner. Oh, that's so good. So what is your website address? And of course, I'll have all the details in the show notes. So how can people get a hold of you and learn about this course? So I am thepurpleteacup.com um, and all of our courses are linked at courses.thepurpleteacup.com and we've got a Facebook page and we have an Instagram page and we even have a Facebook community so that if you're struggling, you can come and join us over there. Um, it's called the Bloggers Bistro and we talk about all the, the life cycle of a blogger and we have great challenges and we just hang out and we share each other's posts and it's a really great way to learn how to blog and create, create a great community. Oh, and have support too, like just um, in a way that's very safe. Yes, our bloggers are, our bloggers are all wonderful. We have people literally in the life cycle. We've got people who are just in the process of setting blogs up to people who've been blogging for, I think I'm the one who's been blogging the longest, but we have, uh, we have lifestyle bloggers in there. We have business bloggers in there. It's just really fun and we share tips and tricks and we have a good time. You really have been blogging a long time. Um, I'm, I think I've been around five years now with two different blogs. Yeah, I'm, uh, so I started, WordPress actually is celebrating their 15th year anniversary this year um, and I have been blogging since they first came out. So <laughs> it's that is been so cool. a while. Um, yeah, and it's great. I'm they, they have really great events literally all over the world. I'm coming to an event in Toronto in a little while where, uh, where I'm going to meet other bloggers. So it's a great community. Oh, that's awesome. Hope, thank you so much. I love that, that this resource is out there for all of us. 
I love that you're coming up with this totally cool course that's going to make it so accessible and easy for women who are thinking about writing and blogging to just dive in and cross it off their list as something that they were a little afraid of and now they've done. And so I really just appreciate the time you took to share on the Women in the Middle podcast and all the work you're doing to support amazing women out there who are just really excited about sharing their message. Thank you so much for having me, Susie. It was great to connect with you. Amazing information, right? So many of my clients are wannabe writers, but feel too overwhelmed and afraid to put themselves out there like this. As a woman in the middle, you have so much to offer and other amazing midlife gals need to hear from you. I love that we're older and wiser. It is totally time to share that in a big way. So that's it for this episode. Remember my challenge to you guys. Really think about where you want to be this time next year. If it's not where you are right now, if you feel stuck, if you feel like life's been passing you by, and if you're ready to get excited about your life again, I'm talking serious excitement, ladies. Head right over to talktosusie.com and let's do this. Go ahead and apply. The first step is just to chat and see what we can do for you. I can't wait to see your name in my calendar. That makes me seriously excited. <laughs> if you like what you've heard on today's episode, just head over to the Women in the Middle podcast on iTunes and leave me a review. You could also share the Women in the Middle podcast on Facebook, maybe in a group that you love of other midlife women, or specifically with one friend who you know would really benefit from hanging out with us amazing midlife gals. You can also check out the show notes with more information and links at www.susierosenstein.com. Let's do this, ladies. One scary but amazing thought at a time. Thanks so much for listening. 